And welcome to Lift FM 98.5, 103.3 FM, and 97.9 on your FM radio dial. And of course, online at Advantage Radio Ministries.org. This is Second Chances, a program that we are blessed through the Lord to bring you each and every week here at Lift FM. And if you're saying, well, what is Second Chances? Here's the best way I can tell you. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're living for Him, then you totally understand that our God is a God of second chances. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or want to get closer to Him, this program is exactly uh, what it's here for, to bless and give you, an op- give you an, op- an opportunity to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. And that's why we put this program on the air each and every week, to give you an opportunity to get set free at the same time learn about a lot of interesting things and how God is using many people to do his work. And we are privileged to have with us today Dr. Randall Price. We actually kind of teased the fact that he was coming on this week. Last week we had the president and co-founder of Rose Publishing, uh, Gretchen Goldsmith, on with us. And, of course, she's uh, put out the Rose Guide to the uh, Temple from uh, Dr. Randall Price. And, Dr. Price, good evening and welcome to Second Chances. Hi, Greg. Pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to be with you, too. Um, Dr. Price, so we can get to know you a little bit uh, better. Why don't you give me a little bit of background of, you know, where you're from, who you are, where were you born, things like that, so we can kind of understand you a little bit. Well, I'm a native Texan. I came to faith as a teenager uh, when the Six-Day War took place. I was brought up in a denominational church, uh, which unfortunately didn't give me a great deal of information about how to have a personal relationship with the Lord. But during the Six-Day War, I saw people who I heard were Jewish and knew they were important for some reason. And uh, and one of the teachers in my high school took me to a church where they were connecting the dots for me. They said, look, this uh, this Temple Mount here has, has fallen into Jewish hands for the first time in history. And, and now uh, prophecy has told us that one day that uh, the Lord is going to come back. And are you ready to, to meet him? What is your relationship with Christ? And I'd never heard those kind of things in my life, and it led me to put my faith in Christ. And in a, in a sense, led me on a journey, a, a journey that eventually took me through uh, studies uh, in the States and theology and Old Testament, uh, on to Israel to study at the Hebrew University and become more personally acquainted with things, to eventually move into the area of archaeology and go back many, many times to Israel. In fact, I'm making my 92nd trip now and uh, see these things and be a part of actually making some of the history related to these events uh, to becoming a professor and teaching now at Liberty University and heading up the Center for Judaic Studies where we talk about the Jewish people, talk about the Bible, talk about the land of Israel and how important it is to the whole world and, and to God's eternal program. Dr. Price, uh, first of all, uh, you, you said a statistic there, and it just it kind of went through one ear and out the other. And then I thought about it. I was like, that's a lot of times, 92 times to Israel. That's, that's quite extensive. Yeah, it was, in fact, uh, one of those trips uh, just uh, a year ago that uh, Gretchen Goldsmith, who you spoke about, and I were there on a, on a uh, tour together. And she had done such an excellent job in putting together the Rose Guide to the Tabernacle that I suggested why not a compliment to that with Rose Guide to the Temple. And we were actually on the Temple Mount and thinking about those things. And and so it was just a natural thing to, to do. And uh, what a wonderful partner to be with. I could provide the text and some guidance on the pictures, and they have their expertise in just uh, creating and crafting beautiful works uh, of art almost, but also uh, essential information to the whole body of Christ. So. Uh, I'm really pleased with uh, the result of all this. Uh, Dr. Price, a, a couple of things uh, before we really get into your writing and, and your other work. Um, tell us how accepting Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, as Savior of your life, once you you know, had those dots connected, so to speak, as, as, a, as a young person, how has that changed your life? Well, I think that I was maybe typical of a, teenager, uh, didn't know my purpose in life, uh, wondered why I was here, thought that there must be some great reason, but had no idea of how to discover it, uh, had kind of dabbled a bit with uh, 
the hope of extraterrestrials and looked into uh, the paranormal and any of these kind of things. And it also produced a fear in my life, a fear of uh, you know, dying, not not necessarily the consequences that came after, because I wasn't even aware of those, but just life ending and, and, and not having understood these things. And, and so when I heard the gospel for the first time, uh, it made a great deal of sense, but I wasn't ready to commit. I, I said, I, I've heard this my whole life. I knew Jesus was born on Christmas Day and died on Easter Sunday, but it was just facts of history. And the, the person who finally made that make sense to me said, look, God loves us. He, he made us. He created us. But he created us for relationship with himself. And, and we don't have that because of sin. It separated us from him. And all these things that you're feeling, all these fears that you have, are because you've not settled the, the most important thing, and that is your relationship with him. And so you can't have peace until you have peace with God. And you can't know forgiveness until you've had the forgiveness of your sins. And you can't know that until you've come to Christ who died for your sins and uh, made the, the possible for you to be his child and to have a place in heaven. And so uh, I just felt moved that there was no possibility that I, I could. I, that night when that invitation was given, I said, that's for me. I, I can't leave this place until I've, I've made this right. And so I made that, that most important decision to put my trust entirely in Christ as a sufficient Savior. And the rest of it has just been a wonderful uh, adventure with him. I've had my ups and downs, as I think most people do, but uh, progressively uh, coming to understand him and his forgiveness and being so thankful that uh, I know him and he knows me. Uh, Dr. Randall Price is our guest here on Second Chances, and uh, we're talking, or going to be talking, actually, about uh, the Rose Guide to the Temple. Dr. Price, you mentioned uh, prior to the Rose Guide to the Temple, you had the Rose Guide to the Tabernacle. Was that your first uh, published piece, or was there things well, prior that to that? That wasn't my piece. That was actually someone else who ah, okay. was Rose. And as I said, I, I, I've, I have 20 other books out there in the marketplace somewhere, and uh, actually three others on the subject of the temple. But I had, I had been impressed myself with the colorful presentation and the way they had done this tabernacle book and felt that my own studies and background in writing on the temple could be useful to creating one similar on this subject. What got you started in writing uh, to begin with? Well, actually, it was the temple. I um, had worked at the time uh, in Israel and it was about the same time back in the 80s that there were movements to rebuild the temple it started among the Orthodox Jewish people. I saw things that I never thought I'd see in my life, the people dressed in priestly garments and people trying to make vessels that would be used in a future temple. And it just led me back to a study of the Bible. I, at that time, really thought that was kind of crazy. But then I looked into the Bible and I said, perhaps... You know, God is a God of history. Things he does is not by accident. They're all part of a program. And I could these things, could these things be happening. The state of Israel, the, the Jewish people come to this place, this movement to rebuild the temple. It was not part of, of some uh, really, uh, you know, design and plan and the purpose of God. As I studied the scriptures, something that I had not done with this focus in mind, I came to realize that it certainly was. The temple was far more important, far more prominent than we had, than I had thought. Just thought of it as some kind of fossil institution, and now I saw it as really the center part of God's plan. His focus to have a relationship. It spanned the Old Testament, the New Testament, and certainly held out all this promise in the future for God completing His purpose for His people and for the rest of the world. As we turn our attention now to the Rose Guide to the Temple, we're visiting with Dr. Randall Price. And, Dr. Price, you refer to the Temple Mount as the most volatile acreage on the earth. And, and why is that? Well, in our day and time, we have that site, uh, the, the, the contest between two rival religions. Now, we might say Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are the three world religions. Uh, Christianity certainly has a vested interest there. We can go back to the Crusades when they fought over that site. But in our day and time, it deals with Judaism, who has returned to the site, the site that for 3,000 years was the capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. The Temple Mount was the place where Abraham had brought his son Isaac, where David had purchased 
a threshing floor, and his son Solomon had built the temple, uh, the very place where Jesus, a Jew, had come and uh, had the last year, last week of his life, as a matter of fact, taught daily in the temple, and then uh, with a promised return, a promise in the Old Testament that the Lord will speedily come to his temple and turn the hearts of the fathers and the children back to one another and establish peace. So all of this was were things that I had seen and really were sort of rediscovering. Um, even the even the church in my own life, the Bible says, are a temple, and drew drew their sanctity, drew their understanding from this ancient structure. So for me, it became a very important thing, something I had not seen, and I was beginning to discover. Uh, is it possible, as some Orthodox Jews believe, that the presence of God still attends the site? Well, they do, and they, and they do because uh, God said of Jerusalem in Psalms 132, verses 13 and 14, he said, The Lord has chosen Zion, he's desired it for his dwelling place, saying, This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, or here I will be enthroned, because I have desired it. And so they say, if it went forever, then in some way God still attends that place. And the famous Western Wall or Wailing Wall, uh, uh, millions of Jews over the course of a year go there. They put prayers and pieces of paper. You can even fax them to the site. But they put them in the crevices of that rock because they believe that God is still in some sense there. And their their prayers, wherever they are on earth, three times a day, they turn toward the, the barren Temple Mount and they put their prayers there. And one of the, the famous daily prayers of the Jews, called the Amidah, is, is that God would speedily rebuild his temple in our time. And so the belief is that one day uh, their destiny as the people of God will be fulfilled when the temple returns. Now, of course, when you talk about the temple, it's really impossible to talk about the Temple Mount without talking about Islam. What is the connection to the site and their claim historically? Is that legitimate? Well, yeah, of course, they would say it's legitimate on the basis that they, as a conquering people, conquered that site, and then as a supersessionist religion, that is, those who uh, feel they have the last word or the last revelation of God, uh, then kind of eclipse any former religion. But now if we compare it with the Bible and a, and a biblical worldview, no, they're, they're simply a pagan people who... Uh, isolated one deity and then, in fact, uh, through warfare, uh, spread uh, their beliefs to other places. And they came to the Temple Mount because they had uh, accrued some of the beliefs of the Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, they recognized that site is important. And when they came there, they said, where is the place where David was? Where is the place where Solomon was? And they found the rock that had been within the, the, the ancient temple, and in time erected their own structure over that, uh, with a new story that Muhammad had had, uh, who's the founder of Islam, had had a night vision, come there, ascended to heaven, and it became a site in Islam, not certainly the holiest site, that would be Mecca and then Medina, but after it, perhaps, uh, this place would be. But our day and time, because of the return of Israel to Jerusalem in 67, uh, I know a whole new conflict has come about, and they have a revisionist history that said Jews were never there, and they never even, not even a stone in Jerusalem that indicates Jewish history, that a temple never existed. So this has become a battle point uh, over that site. Why do you call the study of the temple one of the most vital activities for faith and worship, Dr. Price? Well, if, if we understand the temple, we understand that God, even in the book of Genesis, that the, the Garden of Eden is a holy place where he came and walked and talked with man. Sin drove man from God's presence, but God found a way to bring man back to his presence. And that was at the foot of Mount Sinai where he gave man a revelation of his will through the law. And there he commanded that a, a sanctuary be built, that he might dwell in uh, the presence of men. And that's really what I call the divine ideal. God's whole plan from beginning to end is to have a personal relationship with his his creation. And sin has made that impossible. And yet uh, there is a way to, to breach that, and that's through sacrifice. Something takes the place of a sinner. Some blood is shed instead of the sinner's blood. And so that beautiful picture is drawn to the temple as the place where that, that's centered. 
as we go through time, the Lord Jesus came there. He called it his Father's house. He even called it my house and thought of it in a very personal way and said that this place was designed by God as a place to be a house of prayer for all people. And he envisioned in the future a time when the temple would stand and he would reign, reign and rule, and all the nations and all the people would together uh, worship in that place, uh, just in, in a place where his personal presence was. So I find it very important. And when we talk about the church uh, today, there is no, of course, a temple on earth, but there is a temple in heaven, and there's a spiritual relationship with that temple. And the church is called a temple because the Holy Spirit indwells it, just as the Shekinah glory of God indwelt the temple in the past. And there's a new Jerusalem, and it says there that there's a temple. It says the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So for our lives, and we've come full circle with all of this, uh, one day we'll see him face to face, and it says we'll serve in his temple day and night. So that is, uh, you know, that for, the, for that whole understanding, we go to the scriptures, realize that everybody from the time of Moses through Paul and even beyond up until the destruction of the second temple saw this building with their own eyes. And that's why this visual presentation in the Rose Guide to the Temple is so important. We can enter into that same experience. We're visiting with Dr. Randall Price. He is the author of The Rose Guide to the Temple. Dr. Price, we're going to continue our discussion here in just a moment, but if someone would like to learn more about you or obtain a copy of this particular guide, how does one do so? Well, first, I would have them go to rose-publishing.com. That's the website for Rose Publishing and uh, the book. And, uh, in fact, a, a they can purchase also a digital copy of this book, and it has another uh, almost 200 pages that I've written that we couldn't put in the hard copy, so that's available. Uh, I also have a website called worldofthebible.com, and at worldofthebible.com there's many more resources that I've written and, and DVDs and many other things, as well as free downloadable resources. Dr. Price, uh, it says here among your achievements that you are a THM, a Ph.D., a distinguished researcher, professor, and executive director of the Center for Judaic Studies at Liberty University. You're also an adjunct professor of apologetics at the uh, um, Ver Ver what is it, uh, Vertus? Veritas. Veritas uh, Theological <laughs> Seminary and founder and president of the World of Bible Ministries. Tell us a little bit, if you could, for just a moment, about the uh, Center for the Judaic Studies at Liberty University. Well, I wear all those hats that you describe, but the, the one that I wear most of the time is uh, as a uh, director of the Center for Judaic Studies, which is designed to help our students and faculty as well have resources related to understanding the Jewish people and the land of Israel. Uh, we live in a time in which it's very important to understand that for biblical studies, but also for political situation, uh, to understand well, should we stand with Israel, should we uh, oppose Israel, How, what, what's going on in the world, why is it at the center of the Middle East conflict? Those are all things we deal with. And then, of course, also the future, because we we are firmly committed to the understanding that the Bible uh, should be interpreted literally. If that's the case, then Christ is coming back to this world, and we have a whole program and plan that he's laid out for us in the prophets and in the book of Revelation, and the temple is a part of that. So uh, we teach uh, concerning the past, the present, and the future, so that people can get a better understanding of the original context of the Bible, that is, the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Uh, all kidding aside here, I see your different uh, different things that uh, are listed here uh, under your biography, but with the way you speak, uh, ever any broadcasting experience? <laughs> well, one time I was a pastor at one time, and okay. in that context we had a little radio program, which did pretty well, uh, but uh, not really. I mean, uh, most of it's interviews like this, and I do enjoy teaching and speaking, but haven't done the radio well, with a voice like that, I just had to ask that question. It's the broadcaster in me. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, there has uh, been throughout the years uh, a lot of speculation about the lost Ark of the Covenant. What are some of the theories uh, that you uh, may believe that happened to it? Well, in the book we bring this out as well, that the Ark of the Covenant was at the center of the first temple, and it was the place where the 
commandments, Ten Commandments, were placed. But when the first temple was destroyed, it disappeared from history. And it's been a mystery. Now, the Bible really doesn't tell us what happened, but there are clues. I think the three options are it was either lost, stolen, or destroyed. Uh, we don't think it was lost because it was just way too important for the Jewish people. Uh, even when it was taken in the past, there's two chapters in First, first Samuel 6 and 7 that describe what happened to it. Uh, could it have been stolen? Well, it, the Babylonians came and pillaged the temple and took many of the treasures to Babylon, but there's a list of those. They were brought back safely to Jerusalem, and the Ark of the Covenant's not among them. Uh, could it have been destroyed? Well, again, possibly, but if it was destroyed, it looks like there had been some mention of that in the Bible. Uh, and the Orthodox Jewish hope since you know 2,000 years ago has been that it, it remained intact, it, it was hidden away, and in fact one day will be brought back out. And it, it seems to be more historical than just simply a tradition that the ark which was in the temple was probably hidden somewhere, uh, deep down within vaults of the temple. Now there's destruction of two temples on top of it, so it uh, may not be easy to locate, but there's a firm belief among uh, Jewish Orthodox today who want to rebuild the temple someday, that when they're able to get into that site and they're able to dig like they want to dig to, to build the foundation of the new temple, that they'll find the Ark of the Covenant and they'll restore it to its place. So that, that uh, is the, the best we can know. Uh, there are all kind of theories that it went here or there, but none of those really are quite as credible to my mind as that it never left the place where it was. Uh, do you hear a lot of that type of consensus in in your visits to Israel? There is. Uh, there are the institutions that are involved in trying to make vessels, and actually have made the vessels for a rebuilt temple, who are involved politically in things, uh, pretty much they have that uh, consensus that uh, the Ark is there, one day we'll get it, we'll bring it back out. It can't go to a museum, it can't go other place. It has to go only one place, and that's within a rebuilt temple. So they see that when the time is right, uh, these things will be revealed, and they can do their work. Uh, one more thing we want to try to touch on before we run out of time. You mentioned the temple had eight specific purposes. What are some of those? Well, the, the I mean, recognize that the temple itself uh, is the place where God's presence was established among his people. So it's a station of his divine presence. And I think it's the first and most important of them all, because God wants to have a relationship with us. And it's not simply uh, him in heaven and us on earth. He wants to bring uh, th this full experience to us. And the Bible says one day we will see his face. Um, it also was for Israel a sign of the covenant. He made a special covenant with the Jewish people, and the temple stood as the symbol of that, that's why the Ark of the Covenant uh, and the Tablets of the Covenant were placed within the Temple. It also uh, symbolized this relationship with Israel so that when Israel sinned against God, the Temple was destroyed as a symbol of the end of that relationship. And then when they repented and they were brought back, it was rebuilt as a signal of the end of their exile. Uh, for, for a person who lived with the Temple in their midst, it governed all of life. It was a socio-political institution. Every legal matter, every festival, uh, all of the, the sacrifices, even the reading study of the Bible, everything took place within the temple. So uh, a life was centered around it. it. It was also a picture of the sovereignty of the nation. Uh, only when a temple existed in their midst did they really have the security and the sovereignty uh, of independence. It's just something they don't have today, even though they have established independence. Why so many think it needs to return? And it was meant to be a, a source of blessing. Uh, the original Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12, 3 says that uh, in Abraham's seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Well, the prophets say that blessing will come when the temple stands again and all the nations come to learn about the ways of the Lord from a redeemed Jewish people. And so it will be a, a source of worldwide blessing. And ultimately, uh, it served as a focal point of prayer. Wherever someone was on the face of the earth, they were to look toward Jerusalem, wherever that might be, and pray toward that place, because they recognized that the God of Israel was there. For Christians living in the 21st century, what would you say is the relevance of the temple to the understanding of God and our faith? 
Well, I keep underscoring the fact of a relationship, that the temple is not simply some structure, an architectural building that uh, has no relevance. No, it was a symbol of God. Uh, he, he could not come here where a sinful man is unless there was a, a holy sort of piece of heaven here for him to, to dwell in. And that man could not approach him in his holiness if there was not a mediator, a priest who brought blood, not his own. And, and so all of this is a picture, too, of the Lord Jesus. Uh, 2,000 years ago, he came, but he, he talked about this being his father's house, and he even used the analogy of that for his own body. He said, you know, tear down this temple, and in three days it will be restored, or I'll build it back. And he was speaking of the temple of his body in this case, but it again shows us it's a relationship, and there's no way that it's possible apart from him. So in the 21st century, we need Christ more than ever before, and we need to understand the subject of the temple, which pointed to him and all of the sacrificial system, and one day will be fulfilled by him as he's promised to come again. We're visiting with Dr. Randall Price, the author of The Rose Guide to the Temple. Dr. Price, uh, one more time, we'd like to give you the opportunity. If someone would like to obtain a copy of this book or find out more about you, could you uh, give us some information to uh, do each of those things? Well, the, the website for the book is rose-publishing.com, and that is the website of Rose Publishing. There's many wonderful resources there, hundreds of them, that uh, people ought to avail themselves of. And there's more on this book as well. There is a digital copy of the book available, and there's also a, a chart, a beautiful uh, fold-out chart of the way the temple looked at the time of Jesus. So all these types of things are available there. For myself, uh, I have a ministry called World of the Bible Ministries. We have a website, worldofthebible.com. And at worldofthebible.com, you have a lot of free resources, a lot of information uh, in the news, and, and many other resources that I've done and created uh, for edification and learning. And once again, that's Dr. Randall Price and the Rose Guide to the Temple. And finally, Dr. Price, uh, years ago, as you mentioned, uh, you were in a situation where you were uh, given the opportunity to ask Jesus to be Lord of your life, and they've connected the dots for you. If someone right now is in a similar situation where they would like to have the dots connected and they just need somebody to pray with them, uh, we want to give them the opportunity to, to do that, and I was wondering if you would lead us in a word of prayer to do just that for those people. I'd love to do that. Father, uh, someone who may have been listening to this program just, just tuned in and yet uh, doesn't understand hardly anything that's being said, I should understand that God's Word is a love letter written by Him to men, and when we read other people's mail, we're not bound to understand it. But we can have a relationship with Him, and then every word of His is a word to us. And that comes by simply recognizing that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who died on the cross, laid down his life for us. He substituted his life for our life. And the Bible says if we'll trust in him, I mean, just take him at his word, depend upon him, he says he will save us. All who believe or trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. So right now, where any person is, right in the quietness of their own heart, they can put their trust in Jesus as Savior and find him who will also be their Lord. And he promises that in a moment of time, they can pass from death to life and belong to him. That happened for me. I trust that everyone who's hearing this also has the assurance in their heart they can belong to God by faith in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for that and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our guest on Second Chances has been Dr. Randall Price, the author of The Rose Guide to the Temple. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here at Lift FM. 98.5, 103.3 FM, and 97.9 on your FM radio dial. And, of course, you can always hear any of our programs. We keep them archived all the time at AdvantageRadioMinistries.org. That's AdvantageRadioMinistries.org. Click on Second Chances, and you can listen to any program that you would like. Thank you for listening to Second Chances here at Lift FM.